we have the talks, Samit sir, should we go with the talks first? Yeah, yeah I or... think uh, let's uh, let's uh, do my recording first. Significant stenosis or radicular pain, back pain, who are definitely not fit, is a very very complicated matter. Definitely cannot be finished in ten minutes, but I'm going to try to give a brief overview. So patients who don't have much significant stenosis or radicular pain, back pain, who are definitely not fit for surgery, smaller curves and a reasonable balance, they are better off not being treated surgically. And we use a combination of physical therapy, injections and bracing to keep the patient as fit and active as possible. Surgically, broadly speaking, there are three options. First is a decompression alone without a fusion. Second is a decompression with a limited fusion selecting few levels or finally extensive fusion of the deformity with or without decompression. So a decompression without fusion would be for a patient who has only radicular pain with less back pain and whose curve is less than 20 degrees and whose spines are stable. So the lateral listhesis is less than two millimeter and who have collapsing discs and osteophytes. So these are stable situations which may present with only root pain and can be treated selectively with decompression alone. Of course, if the spine completely collapses in the dynamic X-ray or there is instability, we cannot do that. And the long term problem of this would be progression of the curve and reappearance or worsening of the symptoms. What about a limited fusion? This is very attractive. And these are patients who have leg pain, but require extensive decompression at one or more levels. But for them too, the curve has to be less than 30 degrees and there cannot be a global imbalance. So that is for the selective fusion. How do you select? At the proximal end, you have to make sure that you are not ending at an area of subluxation or segmental kyphosis. And at the distal end, also you have to make sure as to where you're ending it. And if there is a stenosis at L5-S1, and you have to decompress L5-S1, then you may have to go down to the sacrum as well. And if there is a sort of other pathology like a listhesis or a pass defect, again, you may need to go down with the fusion. So the only problem with uh, limited fusion is accelerated degeneration and deformity at the other levels. What about fusion of the entire deformity? If the patient has more of back pain, larger curves, more than 45 degrees, loss of sagittal balance and subluxation, these patients probably need a more extensive fusion. Of course, if you were to read only one thing, I would suggest you read this paper by Lenke and Silva, who have given both a classification and a treatment protocol. As I mentioned in the beginning of my talk, each case is individual based on multiple factors, including their physiological age and bone stock. But if you want to generalize, then this is one way of generalizing it, at least for the radiological point of view. So basically, they have said that there are six levels of operative treatment. The first is decompression alone. The second is decompression with limited posterior fusion only of the decompressed. So that's a limited fusion. The third onwards are all extensive fusions. So third is fusion of the entire curve. Fourth is anterior and posterior fusion. Fifth is not just fusion of the lumbar curve, but extending into the thoracic. So that is you're fusing the entire, almost most of the spine. And the sixth includes procedures such as osteotomies. So how does this work? We look at these factors. Basically, we look at neurogenic claudication, radiculopathy as the symptom. We look at back pain. So whether it's root pain, back pain, which of the two. We look at the x-rays to see if there are stabilizing osteophytes. Is there a listhesis, an olisthesis or a lateral listhesis? We look at the cob and 30 degrees seems to be the cutoff mentioned by these gentlemen, a lumbar kyphosis and a global imbalance. And accordingly, we look, if the patient has minimal symptoms, obviously it's non-operative management, but surgical management of level one, which is a decompression alone, would be used for patients who have only root pain with minimal back pain, good osteophytes, and no listhesis or kyphosis or imbalance. Level two surgery, which is a decompression and a limited fusion would be for patients who have all of this, but also have back pain and less anterior osteophytes. But they again cannot have a lumbar kyphosis or a global imbalance and the coronal cob of 30 degrees is the cutoff. Level 3 surgery is where you fuse the entire curve, but only with the posterior fusion. 
these are again patients who have claudication radiculopathy plus back pain with less of stabilizing osteophytes who have a listhesis and a cob less than more than 30 degrees but if they have a lumbar kyphosis or a global imbalance then just this simple posterior fusion may not be enough and we then go to a level four surgery which includes an anterior column reconstruction because if there is lumbar kyphosis you have to correct the kyphosis into lordosis and if you do so the anterior column has to be fused and reconstructed either by a TLF or nowadays by OLIFs. Coming to a level 5 surgery, which includes fusion of the entire spine, even to the thoracic curve. So if they have all of the indications to do a level 4 surgery, but they also have a global imbalance which can be corrected, then you may have to fuse the thoracic and the lumbar spine because achieving spinal balance, both coronal and sagittal, respecting the pelvic parameters becomes part of the surgery. And finally, if they have a global imbalance with a stiff or a fused spine, these patients then need osteotomies as well. And that becomes a level six surgery. So let's look here. A level one surgery is a decompression alone. Patient with a minimal deformity with just root pain and good anterior osteophytes can be considered for this treatment. But of course, the disadvantage would be a progression of the deformity and a recurrence of the symptoms. A decompression plus a limited fusion is a good option for a patient with claudication, minimal back pain, but a cob of less than 30 and no olisthesis with no lumbar kyphosis and a decent global balance. But these may then progress later on. So this is one of my patients, which was, as you can see, a cob less than 30 and was treated with a limited decompression and fusion. A level three, which is the entire lumbar curve fusion are for patients who also have back pain and who have listhesis more than two millimeter and a cob more than 30, though they have mentioned 45 here. So these patients, as you can see in this x-ray, requires a fusion of the entire curve. And uh, this again is a patient of mine with a much larger curve and a lumbar kyphosis. And this patient required uh, entire curve fusion. Level four, which is anterior and posterior surgery, are those who have larger, uh, larger cobs, listhesis, but who have a lumbar kyphosis. So anyone having a lumbar kyphosis for the correction of the sagittal deformity, the sagittal plane deformity here, needs to have an anterior fusion as well, because that's the only way that the lordosis will be maintained. Level five surgery are those who have global imbalance, but flexible. So they have lumbar kyphosis as well, but more important is that they have a global imbalance, which can be corrected, in which case an entire spine fusion is required for them, thoracic plus lumbar, to correct their sagittal and coronal balance. And the last one are those who are globally imbalanced, but stiff, and they don't have good correction on the side bending films. They need osteotomies in addition to all of these procedures. So osteotomies plus anterior reconstruction and of course decompression as well. If you look at sagittal imbalance as a modifier, which again becomes very important, there is the type one and the type two. Type one is a globally balanced spine with just a flat or a segmental portion of flat or kyphotic spine, whereas the type two are globally as well as segmentally unbalanced spine. So the options here are osteotomies because they are stiff. And you can have simple pontes osteotomies, which are posterior based osteotomies like a chevron, which are closed or a PSO, which is a three column pedicle subtraction osteotomy or sometimes PVCRs, which are more extensive. So if you have a type one sagittal imbalance, which is a globally balanced spine. So the whole spine is globally balanced, but a small segment is flat. You can correct it just by doing segmental pontes osteotomies. But if the imbalance is more, it's a type two imbalance, which means that the spine is also globally imbalanced. You may end up depending on the level of deformity, having to do PSOs or then PVCRs. Finally, like I said, th these are a lot of nuances, a lot of thoughts, because all of this ignores things like the, this was a theoretical discussion. It ignores things like the physiological age of the patient, the physiological status and the frailty, the bone stock and osteoporosis and many, many other factors, including the patient's acceptance, tolerance to surgery and has not spoken at all about the long-term results with these. 
which are fraught with problems. Hence, my own experience in 22 years of practice is that I shudder when a degenerative scoliosis walks into my clinic. And no matter what you do, whether you conserve, whether you decompress, whether you do a limited fusion or an extensive fusion, the result is bad and the patient is unhappy. So I'm really sorry to, to give you such a negative view, but degenerative scoliosis truly has been my Waterloo in spine surgery. Thank you very much.